Good morning and welcome to Lord of Life Church Online. We are so glad you joined us. Be sure to stop by our website, lordlife.com, for more worship services like this. You can also stop by our Facebook page for regular updates from our kids' ministry, story times with our preschool teachers, and COVID-19 updates. Rocky Railway VBS is online and live. This year, 110 children are participating in VBS online. Videos are posted on the Lord of Life website and will be available through the end of August. Thank you for joining us for VBS online this year. Good morning. I'm Pastor Tape from Lord of Life Lutheran Church. It's a pleasure to have you joining us for worship today. Today is a very special day for all of you dads out there. Happy Father's Day. Now, when we celebrated Mother's Day a few weeks ago, I showed you a picture of my mom. So I figure, okay, to be fair to both parents, I better bring in a picture of my dad, or uh, when I get to heaven, uh, I'm going to be answerable to him. He's going to say, why didn't you show them my picture? So here's a picture of my dad. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, and uh, I, I learned a great deal from my father. I just want to uh, share with you a couple of things about my dad. You can see the orange tree. We had an orange tree in our, in our backyard in Florida. But my dad was a very sincere Christian. He made sure that we were always uh, in church every Sunday morning. We had uh, four kids and two parents, and it was uh, quite a chore, I can remember, to get us all ready for church and to be there on time. But uh, he made sure that we were there. Probably the most important thing I learned from my dad is uh, something that he taught me by accident one time. It was a complete uh, um, incidental thing that I overheard a conversation he had with my mom. One time I can remember money was kind of tight, and I can remember my mom asking my dad, uh, should I cut back on our church donations this week because we don't have enough money to pay the bills? And I can remember my dad saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to give the Lord the 10% and um, we'll trust in him to help us pay the rest of the bills. And so that's exactly what happened. Uh, they paid the 10% of, uh, of my dad's income to the church first and then uh, they trusted the Lord to work things out after that. And in that conversation, I recall a couple of things. First of all, the importance of, in a way, us Christians putting our money where our mouth is and uh, giving money to the church to provide for its financial support. That is certainly important for us to do the Lord's work. But even on a broader uh, scale than that, I learned something very important about uh, life in general, and that is do the right thing. You do what the Lord's will is, do that first, and then the Lord will help you take care of the consequences. And that is an important lesson that I have taken with me uh, throughout my, my life, is to try my best to do the Lord's will, and I know that he will be with me to take care of the consequences. Um, and so anyway, today we're going to talk about dads, and we're going to discuss in the message for today the most important thing that fathers can do is to set a good example for their children. And we're going to discuss several ways that uh, dads can do that. So I look forward to uh, sharing that message with you, and thank you very much for joining us.
say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am You're perfect in all of you In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. May he who has begun this good work within us bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious God, creator of the ends of the earth, and yet he calls us his children. He is greater than we can ever begin to imagine, and yet he invites us to call him our Father. We call you our Father, but fail to live as your children. We do not trust you as we should, preferring instead to follow our own inclinations. We are reluctant to accept your will, repeatedly disobey your instructions. We are slow to ask your guidance, but swift to forget you and wander from your side. We all too rarely thank you for what we have, but all too often complain when we do not receive what we ask for. You have always loved us. Forgive our feeble response. Please forgive all our sins. For Jesus' sake, amen. The Lord is like a good father to us, compassionate and merciful, filled with endless love. He is not easily angered, nor does he remain angry forever. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve or punish us as harshly as he could. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so strong is his love toward us. And as far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our sins from us. So be at peace. All your sins are forgiven because of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. Amen. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let us join in prayer. Lord, we are humbled by your greatness, refortified with your strength, amazed at your compassion, thankful for your forgiveness, astounded by all you've provided, impelled to do more for others, filled with great awe and wonder, comforted in your loving arms. We praise and thank you for your undeserved goodness and we resolve today to live more faithfully as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. is undone my 
past is untethered I'll leave it behind and run to my father There is no Father, I'm loved by you. There is no distance in your embrace. Over and over again, you say, I am loved. Father, I'm loved by you. I am loved. Father, Our responsive psalm for this morning is Psalm 103 and reads from verses 1 through 14. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, 
who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Our first reading for this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and reads from verses 1 through 9. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord your God of your fathers has promised you, and the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your whole soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Here ends our first reading for this morning. Our second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12 and reads from verses 4 through 13. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Here ends our second reading for this morning. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew 7 and reads from verses 9 through 11. Which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? 
If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Here ends our gospel reading for this morning. We continue our worship with a kid's message by Tyler. Hey, good morning, Lord of Life kids. Thanks for tuning in with us today. We are so glad that you're here. Today is a special day. Today is Father's Day. It is a day where we thank dads for all that they do. We tell them that we love them and for all that they teach us. Um, I want to share with you an uh, important verse from the book of Luke, which comes from the New Testament. It says this in chapter 11, verses 11 through uh, 13. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now that might seem like a kind of a weird verse for Father's Day, but let me share with you three things that I think that talks about. First is when we ask our dads or our fathers for something, they usually don't give us something worse in return. The Lord's Prayer um, talks about give us this day our daily bread. And so our Heavenly Father provides for us not only our daily bread, but all the food that we need, all of the things that we need for this life, our home, our cars, our education, um, all the things that we get through our daily life, God provides that. And sometimes He provides that through our Father. And so today we thank our fathers for all of the daily bread that they provide us. The second thing that it reminds me, it starts with another B, is um, a ball. When I was a boy, uh, my dad and I played catch a lot. Um, he taught me how to throw the ball, how to catch the ball, and um, it was special things like that that my dad taught me. Um, he taught me a lot of other things besides playing baseball, uh, but that's one of the things that he taught me and as fathers, they pass on things to their kids. They teach their kids things. So I am glad that I have a father who loved me enough to take the time to do things with me, to spend time with me. So we have daily bread, a ball, and lastly, most importantly, the Bible. The third B is a Bible. It reminds me of my father because the Bible reminds me of my father um, because he reads the Bible to me and taught me about God's love. And he prayed with me every night before I went to bed. And he always reminded me that I was forgiven when I would do things that weren't good or that would sin against my brother or my sister or against him. He would say, you're forgiven. And so God provided me with an amazing dad who would teach me about the Bible. And so just like our verse today, it says, which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? So if you ask your dad for... Uh, for something, he wouldn't give you something worse in return. And so, how much more does our Heavenly Father love us than our earthly father? Our Heavenly Father loves us so much that He sent His only Son to come into this world and pay the price for your sin and for my sin. And He welcomes us into His family. And He provides for us our daily bread, all the things that we have and enjoy in this life, and the Word of God. So will you pray with me and thank God for all that he has provided us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our fathers, that you provided us a family and a, a community that will love us and take care of us. Thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross. You are the best father that we have. You're our Heavenly Father. And would you watch over us and protect us and continue to provide for us? We give you thanks and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you later.
richest treasure How great the pain of searing loss The Father turned His face away As wounds which mother chose My sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Called out among the scoffers It was my sin that had Unseal it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my. May the Lord bless my speaking and your hearing. Amen. Well, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Contrary to what the skeptics will tell you, Father's Day is not a celebration that was invented by Hallmark just to sell more cards. Quite to the contrary, it began with Mrs. Sonora Dodd of Spokane, Washington. Her mother died in childbirth and her father, William Jackson Smart, a Civil War veteran, was left to raise all six of his children as a single parent. After Mrs. Dodd became an adult, she became more aware of the strength and selflessness her father showed in raising her and her siblings. She wanted to do something to express her appreciation and her admiration for all that her father had done for the family. Then on the second day of May in 1909, she was sitting in church listening to a sermon about Mother's Day. And yes, then the idea came to her, there should be a Father's Day. She suggested to the city officials that June 5th 
the anniversary of her father's death be celebrated citywide as a day to acknowledge fathers. But that really did not give them enough time to make adequate preparations. So the date was pushed ahead to the third Sunday in June of the following year. The first Father's Day was then celebrated in Spokane, Washington on June 19, 1910. Presidents Woodrow Wilson and Calvin Coolidge both supported the idea of a National Father's Day. And on 1966, President Lyndon Johnson issued a presidential proclamation declaring the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Then finally, in 1972, President Richard Nixon established Father's Day as an official permanent holiday to be held on the third Sunday of every June. Certainly, it is good and right to remember all that our fathers have done for us. Their strength, their love, and their guidance is a beautiful example of what we have received from our Heavenly Father. His strength, His love, and His guidance is with us each and every day. One of the most important things to remember about dads is that dads in the family make a difference, make a huge difference. Consider the following statistics from the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Girls without fathers in their lives are 2.5 times more likely to get pregnant before marriage. Boys without fathers in their lives are 63% more likely to run away from home, 37% more likely to use drugs. Boys and girls without fathers are twice as likely to drop out of school, twice as likely to end up in jail, and nearly four times more likely to need help for future emotional and behavioral problems. Yes, even the Department of Health and Human Services knows fathers make a difference in a family. And today I would like to focus on how fathers can make a difference, especially you Christian fathers. There is much involved in being a Christian father and raising Christian children. And today I would like to focus only on one thing. You might say the most important thing, and that is setting a good example for your children so that you can reflect to them the love your Heavenly Father has given you each and every day in giving you his strength, his love, and his guidance. By setting an example in your family, you can pass that all down to your children. And the best way that you can do that is to set a good example for them in how you live your life. It is good to tell your children right from wrong, but it is even better to show them by your example. They may or may not hear what you say, but they will certainly see what you do. I can remember my dad used to say to me, do as I say, not as I do. Maybe some of you had dads out there that told you the same thing. Now, my father had many fine qualities. He was a strong Christian, and he made sure we were in church every Sunday. He paid for much of my college and seminary education. I owe him a great deal. I'm thankful for all that he did for me. But when he looked at me and he said, John, do as I say, not as I do, well, he really wasn't at his best. Although I do think that when he said that, he was halfway joking. At least he always said that with a smile on his face. So let's look at a few important ways you can set a good example for your children. The first, and I would say one of the most important examples you can set for your children, must be in how you treat their mother. In order to be a good father, you must first be a good husband. The two always 
always go together. Don't begin to think that you can be a good father while being a lousy husband. That never works. Show your children how their mom is to be treated. Treat her with love and respect, and they will do the same in their home. From the way you treat their mother, not only will they learn how to treat her, but they will also see how to treat other people in general. If you are tired and frustrated because of the work of a busy day and you come home, is your wife the first one that you take it out on? In treating your wife with love and respect, you are not only showing your son how to treat his future wife, but you're also teaching your daughter what to expect from her future husband. Your daughter will be all the more encouraged to shy away from a fellow who treats her rudely and disrespectfully. When she is mistreated by a boyfriend, she will not think, oh, that's okay, that's acceptable, that's the way my dad treated mom, that's no big deal. No, but rather she will be more likely to think, that's not the way I grew up. I know better because that's not the way my dad treated my mom and I refuse to be treated this way. Martin Luther writes, every husband should eat, drink, sleep, live, and breathe for the good of his wife and she should do the same for him. If families would live like that, can you imagine how the divorce rate would plummet? What peace that would bring to many households. What an excellent example that would be for our children. The second example you can set for your children is to have the right priorities in life. How much do your children see you fret and worry and talk about material possessions. Now certainly material possessions are important. We need money, we've got to pay the bills. But when our concern for material things take precedent over spiritual things, life will not go well. We then set a poor example for our children. For in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith. Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Dads, Show your children what it's like to have the right priorities in life. Let your children see from your example that you put Christ and his kingdom first above everything else. They see that when you take them to church, when they see you in prayer, when they see you at home reading the Bible, when they see you leaving home and going to some congregational meeting, eventually, when we have meetings here again at church. In your actions, they will see your priorities. Show them that God and his kingdom come first in your life, and they will learn to put it first in their lives.
The third example you can set for your children is to manifest in your life the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Those are listed in Galatians chapter 5, where Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are these the values prevalent in your life? What kind of values do you want your children to have? As a Christian parent, you want them to live and grow up like sincere, dedicated Christians following the way of Jesus. You do not want them, you do not want them to copy the values they see in society, or worse yet, the TV. Show your children there is a better way to live than what they see on television. Demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, but especially, you should do it all the time, but especially demonstrate these fruits in dealing with your children. Show them what it's like when you're dealing with them to have patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They will see that kind of life is a good thing, that it is a pleasant thing, that kind of living is worth imitating. The fourth example you can set for your children is in the context of discipline. Yes, there will be times when you must discipline your children if you love them. Hebrews 12 tells us, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? When discipline is necessary, Always make sure your children understand that it comes from love and concern. Discipline never proceeds from hatred or anger or an ill temper. My dad used to tell me, and I'm sure, I'm sure many of you heard it from your dads as well, this is going to hurt me more than it will hurt you. And I can remember thinking to myself, Dad, if it's going to hurt us both, why don't we just skip the whole thing? But even though I thought that, I knew better than to say anything like that out loud, or my situation would quickly go from bad to worse. The fifth example you can set for your children is to show them your humble dependence upon Jesus and his forgiveness. Your children will know that you are a sinner. As hard as you try to set a good example for your children, you will not be perfect. You will fall short, and your children will be the first to see that. They will look, and they will see from your example how you handle your sin. Do you minimize it? Do you ignore it? Do you make excuses for it? Do you blame others for it? Or do you turn to Jesus and ask for his forgiveness? King Solomon tells us in Proverbs 23 and 22, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That proverb is the general rule, but we all know sad exceptions to the rule. There are always those cases when in spite of the father's best efforts, children wander from the straight and narrow way. That can be disappointing, aggravating, sad, and very painful. When that happens, it is helpful to recall Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. The father and the son had their serious disagreements. The son was extremely disrespectful, left his father's house, squandered his inheritance in a lifestyle of wastefulness and immorality. Yet here it is important to note, the father never stopped loving his boy, just as God never stops loving you. That is such an important lesson for anyone with children who have strayed from the narrow way. Such wayward children 
need our prayers and our patience and our love. Your love for each one of your children is not to be based on their obedience, their respect, or their worthiness. Your love for every child must be as unconditional and as consistent as Christ's love for you is unconditional and consistent. So love your children each and every day. Love each of your children desperately. Love them if they are good or bad. Love them even if they don't understand you. Love them even if you don't understand them. Love them even if they are crude, even if they are rude. Love them even if they are evil. And if you think I am overestimating my case here, consider this. Did Jesus love even Judas? Love your children, always, no matter what. And the best way you can show your love for them is by demonstrating in your life a love that places the kingdom of God first, a love that manifests itself in peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, and show them a love that disciplines them for their own good. Never, never out of anger. That kind of love should be familiar to each and every one of us, for that is the same kind of love you and I have received from Jesus. When we demonstrate that love in our families, we show our children that following Jesus is important for us and it's important for them today and every day in their lives. Amen. Let us join together in the takeaway prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for our fathers. We thank you that when you walked on this earth, you set a perfect example for us in putting the will of your father's kingdom before all things. We thank you for sending us your Holy Spirit so we can bear his fruit within the relationships of our own families. We thank you that you discipline us out of love for our own good. Help us, and especially all dads, reflect that same kind of love to their children each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue our worship by confessing our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. O merciful Father, hear your people as we pray in the name of Jesus on behalf of all people everywhere. God our Father, Today we give you thanks and praise for fathers young and old. We pray for young fathers newly embracing their vocation. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family, and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for older fathers with thanks and gratitude. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion 
walks with them in their sorrow. We remember with thanks fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers who are no longer with us, but who live forever with you in heaven, and also they are in our memory. We thank you, Lord, for the nourishment and the love they have given us while they were here among us. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Matthew Roth the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your son and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly employ you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us this land which is our heritage. May we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and honorable ways of living. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion. Save us from pride and arrogance and from every evil course of action. Grant that we who came from many nations with many different languages may become a unified people. Support us in defending our liberties and give those to whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, help our hearts to be thankful, and in troubled times, help us turn to you for our help. Faithful God, give healing and strength to the sick and all afflicted in body or mind, and grant to those who struggle the gift of peace of mind and heart. Restore our nation and the world in health and livelihood, and preserve us from all pestilence, fear, and discord. All these things, Father, and everything else for which we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our prayers with the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is among us. He will lead us in God's holy ways. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>